Okay, we know markets can fail when there are merit goods around and also when there are positive externalities. Subsidies is one way the government can get in and try and solve these market failures, okay, providing subsidies. Subsidies, very simply, are just money grants given to firms. The intention is to lower the cost of production. Really, if you think about it, they are just the opposite of taxes. Okay? And the intentions are very much the opposite too. So by giving out money grants to firms, that will lower the cost of production and hopefully increase output and reduce price. How does that work on a diagram? Well, again, very basic demand and supply diagram going on here, with initial equilibrium at P1 and Q1. Well, through the implementation of the subsidy, the supply curve will shift downwards, okay? which will bring us a new equilibrium at P2, Q2. And the vertical distance between the two supply curves, wherever that is, the vertical distance tells you the value of the subsidy. So if we go to the new equilibrium here and do a line vertically upwards, well that vertical distance that tells you the value of the subsidy times it by the number of units sold, which is why I've done a line across, gives you the cost, the total cost to the government as a result of imposing the subsidy. Okay, so that, the value of this rectangle tells you how much it costs the government to implement the subsidy. But more than that, we can work out just who benefits from the subsidy. Well, consumers benefit from the lower price. Okay, so that little chunk there is how much the consumers benefit from. Whereas the producers benefit that much up top. Okay, so they gain the rest of it. Which tells you that not all of the subsidies passed on to consumers. Some of it is, but not all of it is. Some of it's kept in the firm by producers there. Okay, but the intentions are solid. To increase production from Q1 to Q2 and reduce prices. So they are the two good things. Okay, and why are subsidies good? Well, they increase output. From Q1 to Q2, closer to socially optimum levels. Remember your market failure diagrams. Uh, Q1 was to the left of Q star. Well, now we're moving closer towards the social optimum, at least in theory, which is good. At the same time, okay, prices fall. All right. As prices fall, there's an extension of demand, so hopefully now consumers will buy more of whatever this is. So if it was a merit good and we have underconsumption problems, well, hopefully subsidies can solve the underconsumption through the reduced prices. Okay, so any underproduction issues, any underconsumption issues can be solved by a subsidy. Good thing. But then why is it bad? Why is a subsidy potentially a bad thing? Well, subsidies are very, very expensive. Okay, that total rectangle, the size of the subsidy, the total value of the subsidy is very, very large. And that will carry a large opportunity costs for the government. Could that money have best been used, or could that money have been used elsewhere for better purposes? Um, where has that money actually come from? Has it been taken away from different areas of spending? Who knows, but there's probably a very, very large opportunity cost involved in actually imposing this subsidy in the first place. At the same time, not all is passed on to the consumer. And we've seen that straight away here. Okay? And especially when demand changes. So if demand is very inelastic or demand is very elastic, the actual amount that's passed on to the consumer will change very much. Okay, so that's something else to bear in mind as well. Also, if the subsidy is given to inefficient firms, it might not be best targeted. Okay, because these firms are being wasteful, the subsidy is just going to incentivize them to carry on being wasteful. Okay, and that's not a good thing there. All right, so in that sense, um, Governments need to make sure that they're giving it to the right firms. Given to inefficient firms, the effect might be more diluted. Okay? And finally, the effect of subsidies, whether they solve market failure, depends on a few things. Depends on the elasticity of demand. If demand is very elastic, then quantity is going to change by a huge amount. Great. So if we're looking to solve any underproduction issues and demand is elastic, great, it's going to work. If we've got massive underconsumption issues and demand is very inelastic, then the price will change a lot, in which case that's good as well for solving very good market failure. But the end effect will depend on the elasticity of demand. That's something to, worth, uh, to bear in mind as well. It also depends on who gets the subsidy, like we said. If inefficient firms get them, the incentives for them to use the subsidy might be different to the actual core intentions. So in that sense, who's given the subsidy is important as well if we're looking at solving market failure. 
And finally, the level of the subsidy too, so information, the quality of information around for government um, is important too. So, uh, how much is subsidised? If they over-subsidise, maybe we're going to produce too much of something. If they under-subsidise, maybe the market failure is not going to be solved as efficiently as would be liked. So, the level of, inform of information available to the government is also going to um, determine the end result of the subsidy. Okay, so that's subsidy done for you. Stay the vision next. See you then.